Hi, beautiful friends of bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me for another book miss video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad that you were here. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today we are talking about autobi authors. So if you have been on my channel for any length of time, there are authors that I talk about all of the time, practically nonstop. And I was thinking recently about some of the authors that have recently come on my radar within the last year or two that are now like all time favorites that I will buy basically anything that they ever write just because I've enjoyed their work so much. And so I wanted to talk with you today about those authors. I'm not going to be mentioning any of the other authors that I mentioned frequently on my channel, like Taylor Jenkins Reid, Kristen Hanna, Colleen Hoover, Karen Slaughter, Sarah J Mass, Riley Saker, because you already know that they are my auto by authors. Like I said, I'm going to be focusing on authors that I've pretty much discovered within the last year, maybe year and a half. I did try to narrow this list down to only authors that I've read at least two books from. I have discovered some fantastic authors this year, books that are probably going to make my top favorites list, but because they are maybe debut authors, so they only have one book out, or if I've only read the one book by them, I don't necessarily feel like I can call them an auto buy, even though I really do feel like they are at this point. I kind of want to read at least one more book to have it cemented in my mind that they are auto buy. So for the most part, all of the authors here, I've read more than one book by and the vast majority of them I only recently discovered this year or maybe last year as well. I have quite a few to talk to you about today. So we are going to go ahead and just jump right in. And in the interest of time and efficiency, even though editing Brittany is not going to be super happy about this, I'm not going to be holding up the books individually. I'm just going to be popping them up on the screen for you. Now these are in absolutely no particular order. They are just in the order that I wrote them down. So please don't mistake the order that I'm discussing them in as like a ranking that is not at all the case. I didn't plan on ranking these authors. I just want to talk to you about some of my favorites. So first let's go ahead and talk about Abby Jimenez. I have read two books by her this year, starting with Part of Your World. I had heard literally nothing but amazing things about that romance. And so I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. I went in very skeptically, very trepidatiously, but I absolutely loved that romance. It is probably one of my favorite romances of all time. I am just amazed at, first of all, how well Abby Jimenez is able to write a male love interest. And I also feel like she does harder hitting romances very well. Like she creates very realistic, not over the top situations that definitely bring a level of heartache and drama to the story. And it just works so well. And Yours Truly, which is a companion novel to Part of Your World. It follows the best friend of the main character from Part of Your World. I didn't love it as much as Part of Your World, but it still had a lot of the same things that I loved about Part of Your World. And I still really enjoyed it. It was a strong, solid romance. And I am absolutely going to be reading anything that Abby Jimenez puts out in the future. She does have three backlist titles. It's like a companion companion series of three books starting with a friend zone. I actually have the friend zone on my December TBR and I hope that I enjoy it a lot. But even if I don't, I still think I would continue with Abby Jimenez's new works in the future. So even if I don't love the friend zone and I don't continue in that little series, I will almost be guaranteed to pick up anything new that she writes in the future. I also do want to highlight Lisa Jewell. Now I know that I have mentioned her pretty frequently on my channel, but she's still fairly new to me. I discovered her last year with her newest release at the time called The Night She Disappeared. And I absolutely loved that one. Since that time, I think I've probably read at least four other Lisa Jules and I've enjoyed them all. Some definitely more than others, but for the most part, Lisa Jewel is able to bring you just a solid reading experience. She is the master of the multiple timelines or at least the multiple perspectives where you're following different characters and you're trying to find out how they all connect and weave together. And I feel like she does that very, very well. So she instantly became an autobi author as soon as I read The Night She Disappeared. And then the second book I believe I read by hers was was watching you. And I ended up binging that one in 24 hours. I could not put it down. And still to this day, I think that is one of my favorite Lisa Jules. Her newest release, None of This is True, is definitely getting a lot of buzz. I think it's a lot of people's favorites. Even people who had read Lisa Jewel in the past and didn't enjoy it really loved None of This is True. And I can understand why. It is definitely somewhat of a departure from her other books. There is a podcast element to it, which was really well done, by the way. But also it didn't actually contain multiple timelines or anything like that. It is in the present. There are a couple of different perspectives. But overall, I feel it was just like a different story and still extremely well done. She is very versatile, I feel, as a mystery thriller author. And even if her books are more character driven and slower paced, I still feel like they're very engaging. They're very compulsively readable and you just kind of want to know what is going to happen. Now, she definitely does have a lot of older releases that are more on the contemporary side. I think that's kind of how she started was in contemporary. I don't plan on reading those, so I'm not necessarily trying to read her to zero. But I do have several of her backlist mystery thrillers on my list. And of course, I will absolutely read anything that she puts out in the future 
picture because I think she's just fantastic. Another one that I've discovered recently is Jennifer Hillier. The very first book that I read by her was The Butcher. I don't know if that was her debut. I would have to look into it. It is definitely an older release. I think it came out in 2014 and I loved it. If you have read that book, you will know that within the first chapter, there's a major twist. It kind of throws everything you think you know about the story on its head. I was cleaning the bathroom when I was reading that and I had to stop and I was like, oh, and I just loved that she was able to do that for me. The next book I read was The Things We Do in the Dark. It was a book of the month selection. And so I jumped at the chance and I didn't necessarily love it as much, but I still thought it was very well crafted. I did predict a lot of the things that were happening in there, but it was still an interesting journey. And since then I have read Jar of Hearts as well as Little Secrets. And both of those I enjoyed immensely. Little Secrets, I think is right up there with The Butcher as two of my favorites. I absolutely will probably be reading Jennifer Hillier to zero. I don't necessarily think she has an extensive backlist. I think there's only a handful of other books that I haven't read and I will certainly be reading more from her in the future. She is definitely on the darker side for mystery thrillers. So if you don't feel like you can handle that, I wouldn't pick her up. So I kind of put her on par a little bit with Karen Slaughter. I think Karen Slaughter is still a level above her, but Jennifer Hillier is not afraid to put her characters through the ringer. It is the epitome of dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. And that just speaks to my soul. I just absolutely love that. So Jennifer Hillier is certainly an autobi author for me now. I also want to go ahead and highlight Diane Chamberlain. I can't remember when I picked up the very first book of hers. I want to say it was last year with Necessary Lies. And Diane Chamberlain typically writes historical fiction that has both a past and a present feature. And she covers topics that I don't necessarily hear talked about all that often. And a lot of her books also deal heavily with racism and prejudice and things like that. Necessary Lies actually has perspectives, I believe in the 1950s, and it was dealing with the forced sterilization of like young, poor black women and the controversy surrounding that. And the most recent one that I read was The Last House on the Street. And that was set when black people were going to start getting the right to vote. And it was about a white girl who was desperate to help these people register to vote and some of the terrible things that happened to her as she was trying to do this. And of course, there's like a past perspective and a present perspective. And I feel like Diane Chamberlain is a wonderful storyteller. Her stories are absolutely engaging and she's able to connect you with not only the characters, but also like the time period in which she is writing. I think my favorite book that I read by her so far is Big Lies in a Small Town. That story still sticks with me. I still think about it. I absolutely loved it. Both the past and the present timeline was extremely intriguing. Again, it deals with topics of racism and there's a mystery in the past that gets solved in the present and it was just absolutely wonderful. So that is where I would recommend starting with her. A brand new one that was actually just recently added to this list was Stacey Willingham. I read A Flicker in the Dark when it was released and her newest release, All the Dangerous Things, came out this year and I loved it. I thought that it was wonderfully done. And what I really enjoyed about it was the unreliable narrator that was unreliable even to herself. And it wasn't because she was a drunk or any of the standard tropes that are typically used to make a narrator unreliable. There was a completely different but plausible reason why the main character was unreliable. And I thought that it was just so incredibly well done. I loved the story from start to finish. I was engaged with it. I wanted to know what happened. And it definitely cemented Stacey Willingham as an autobi author for me. She has a brand new release coming out in January, I believe. And I will absolutely pick that up and read it as soon as possible. So this next author that I'm going to talk about is a little bit of an outlier. And that is because first of all, I discovered her in 2020. So she's not as recently added to this list as some of the others. But also, I still feel like I need to read more from her in order to fully cement her as an autobi author. But that is Simone St. James. I read The Sundown Montel during the pandemic. I remember working from home and listening to that book. And I flew through it in less than 24 hours because I could not put it down. Simone St. James's books almost always have a paranormal aspect to it. So ghosts are pretty prominent in her books. And she just writes them in so well. And I feel like she does it differently than other authors. And I just appreciate how seamlessly she's able to include ghosts in her story as if it's like completely plausible and unquestionable that there are ghosts in this area, in this world, and they're there. You know what I mean? So I love the Sundown Motel so much. I also remember enjoying The Broken Girls, just not as much as the Sundown Motel. And Book of Cold Cases, I have mixed feelings on because I remember being completely distracted in life when I was reading that. And so I don't know if my feelings on that book were a book thing or a me thing or a combination of the two. I just remember not necessarily being as connected to that story as I was the other two. So I really do kind of want to read at least her newest release, which is coming out next year to ensure that I absolutely love her and want to continue. But as of right now, I do consider her an autobi author just because I have read three books from her. I absolutely love the Sundown Motel and I'm very intrigued by the premise of her books to continue picking her up. So I'm going to go ahead and keep her on this list for now and we will see going forward. Another author that I'm excited to add to this list is Alice Henderson. Y'all know that I read A Solitude of Wolverines. I believe it was last year and I absolutely loved it. It is 
is currently now one of my favorite wintry isolation thrillers. And a couple of months ago, I was able to read A Blizzard of Polar Bears by her. And I think I enjoyed that one even more than A Solitude of Wolverines. I don't know whether A Ghost of Caribou, which is the third book in the series, is going to take place in a wintry atmosphere. I don't know. But what all of the books have in common is that they follow a wildlife biologist named Dr. Alex Carter. She is heavily involved in conservation efforts. So in the very first book, she is on a nature preserve trying to study wolverines, trying to prevent them from being coming endangered or extinct. And the same thing kind of happens in the second book where she's in, I want to say maybe Canada, like very northern Canada, studying polar bears. What's really great about these books to me is not only the atmosphere and the isolation that Alice Henderson brings to it, but also a lot of information on conservation, climate change, all of that stuff. She makes these very educational and informative without being preachy about it. They're very accessible because Dr. Alex Carter is a wildlife biologist. And so she's able to seamlessly put this information. And I just appreciated that so much as an animal lover, as an animal activist, as somebody who tries to do what she can to minimize her environmental impact. I just appreciate the message of the books so, so much. And again, she just crafts a wonderful compulsively readable thriller. And I'm excited to get to A Ghost of Caribou. I know the fourth book I believe is scheduled to come out in 2024. I don't know how many books are going to be in this series. I don't know if Alice Henderson will ever write a book that's outside of the series. I don't know. I don't care. But whatever she decides to put out, I will absolutely pick up because I just think that she's a very talented thriller author and she's also very knowledgeable on subjects that I personally am passionate about. So she is certainly an auto buy author for me now. Another author that became an auto buy after the first book that I read, but I have since read a second book by him is S.A. Cosby. I have raved about Razorblade Tears since I first read it last year. It was one of my favorite books of last year. It was dark, gritty, gruesome. It was satisfyingly violent. It was. It was satisfyingly violent. And if you've read that story, you know what I mean. And it was wonderful. S.A. Cosby writes, if there is such a thing, I would say he writes lyrical thrillers. That's not necessarily something you would typically expect from a thriller, but his writing is just so beautiful without being flowery. And it works very well with the stories that he tells. And I read All the Sinners Bleed, which is his newest release. I didn't love it nearly as much as I loved Razorblade Tears, but it was still such a strong, solid story. I just think that he is a wonderful writer and I'm excited to read his backlist. I have his other two books on my TBR. I plan to get to them, at least one of them next year. And I will absolutely be keeping an eye on anything that he writes in the future. Another one that I was able to just recently add to this list because I only recently read a second book by her is Frida McFadden. I read The Housemaid only a couple of months ago and it was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. I was not expecting it to go in the direction that it did. And the way that it ended left so much possibility for future books. I'm excited to see where the main character Millie goes in the other books. I actually have The Housemaid Secret on my physical TBR. It's definitely on my TBR for next year. And the third book is also coming out next year. And I'm here for it. I also recently read Never Lie. And that book took me on a journey because I was reading it and I thought for sure I knew what was going to happen. I thought for sure I had the twist down and I was kind of frustrated and angry about it because it was so obvious. And she must have done that on purpose because she took it in a completely different direction. It was completely different from anything that I was expecting. And it certainly made Frieda McFadden an auto buy author for me. So like I said, I have The housemate Secret physically. I have some of her other books on my virtual TBR that I plan to get to as well. And I just hope that I continue to love her books as much when I pick them up. I just have two more that I want to talk to you about. The first is Megan Golden. So I discovered Megan Golden with her release The Night Swim and I really enjoyed it. And so I ended up picking up her backlist The Escape Room, which I didn't enjoy as much. In fact, I think The Escape Room is probably my least favorite book by her. But then I read Stay Awake and loved it. I thought that that was such a well-crafted thriller and it plays around with the concept of fugue states and people like losing their memory legitimately and not remembering what's happening. And it was just so well-crafted and I loved it. Megan Golden also had a new release called Dark Corners, which is kind of a companion to The Night Swim because it follows the same main character. And I think that I actually enjoyed Dark Corners more than I did The Night Swim, which I think is an unpopular opinion, but I still really enjoyed Dark Corners. I am absolutely hyped for anything that she puts out in the future because she is another very talented suspense thriller author that just knows how to craft a story to keep you engaged and interested. And she also does some pretty interesting things. Like I said, Stay Awake was probably one of the more unique concepts in a thriller that I've ever read. And I just enjoyed what she did. So she is certainly an autobi author. And the final author we are going to talk to about today is probably the most recent one that was added to this list because I only just finished my second book by her. And that is Adrienne Young. I'm particularly talking about Adrienne Young's adult novels. She got her start in YA fantasy. And the only book that I read in her YA age range is Fable. And I really enjoyed that story. I had a great time. I don't think I'm going to be continuing in this series, but I do know that I really enjoyed the story. But what really put Adrienne Young on my radar and what has cemented her as an autobi author is certainly her adult speculative fiction. I read Spells for Forgetting earlier this year, and then I recently finished The Unmaking of June Farrow, and I absolutely adored it. Spells for Forgetting is definitely more of kind of a witchy vibe, definitely more magical in nature. 
Barrow. I can't really say with the unmaking of June Barrow. I can't really say like what the speculative aspect of that is because I feel like it would be a spoiler. I feel like finding out what the speculative aspect is is part of the journey of the story. So I'm not going to say, but it's definitely very, very different from Spells for Forgetting. But both of those books have a lot of parallels. Like they are both set in very small towns. And then there's second chance romance kind of in both, but again, very, very different. And there are also like secrets and betrayals and complicated family dynamics. And it was just wonderful. I loved both of them so very much and they are extremely atmospheric. I talk about them more in depth in my wintry recommendation video, which should be up before this video. But if you're interested on learning a little bit more about each one and like what the stories are, please feel free to check out that video. I am very excited to see what she puts out in the future. Don't know if I would read any of her new YA releases. I'm not going to go back and read any of her YA fantasy, but depending on what she puts out in the future, I may consider looking into some YA fantasy if she releases it. I just love her writing so much and I'm excited to see what else she does. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are the Audible authors that I wanted to discuss with you today. Of course, please comment down below and let me know who some of your favorite Audible authors are. I would love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me some kind of pencil pen writing emoji. I always appreciate it so much when you take the time to leave me a comment, even if it's just the emoji. It helps my channel so very much with the engagement and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am participating in Book Miss, which means from December 1st through December 25th, if I'm successful, there should be one video going up every single day. And so if you don't want to miss out on any of that content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. You all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find down below along with any of the books that I've discussed in the videos. Until next time, guys.